welcome to my workshop. Something a little bit different today. I'm going to do a project, uh, something suitable for a quick job over the weekend if you want to do one, or if you're a beginner this might be a good way into a little bit of woodwork, uh, and hopefully a practical project at that. I'm just going to make a little table to stand the clothes washing basket on, and mount the peg bucket into, out by the clothesline. Now it needs to be heavy because we've got a doberman so we don't want him knocking the thing over while it's being used or even while it's just sitting there not being used. So reasonably heavy. So I've got myself, <laughs> got myself some of these old fence posts that we used to use in the garden for a fence. Uh, that isn't there anymore. So uh, in my usual fashion I'm going to try and recycle some timbers. Uh, these hopefully will be the legs and give it some weight. Alright, so I shall show this in uh, step by step process how each part's done and uh, I'll include some plans. To complete this project you're going to need a saw, a jigsaw, a drill, a chisel, a mallet, a square, a pencil, a compass or a circle jig. This is the circle jig here. Uh, some drill bits, you'll need a 3mm drill bit and some 8 gauge screws in 30mm and 38mm lengths and those screws need to be galvanised or otherwise coated so as they're safe for treated wood because we're building this out of treated pine. I'm going to put a cutting list and then some sets of plans up on the screen and if you'd like to copy any of those down the easiest way would be just to pause the video and then use um, print screen to capture the, the screens there each time. So uh, to do that on a Mac, that's Command Shift 3. And to do it on Windows, I think it's Alt Print Screen. And if you're watching on an iPad or an iPhone, it's the Power button and the Home button at the same time. And you hold them down until you get a camera kind of sound effect. So I've cut the four beams for the top, they're ready to go sitting aside at 950mm long. Now I'm going to cut some legs at 700mm or 70cm. seen there that it took two cuts to cut through that because it's slightly thicker than the depth of cut on the uh, capex. So yeah, two cuts got through it all right though, so that'll do the trick. There's one leg at 70. when you're using old timbers like this is to check for screws and nails. Uh, there are no nails, I built the original fence. But there's some, certainly some screws I've had to avoid. Uh, a good idea is to use a metal detector. On the top of the two original wooden posts were these chamfers. Now I like those, I think that's good because it's going to reduce the surface area contacting the floor or the, the ground outside to some degree. Uh, so, I'm going to do it to all the others. So what I've done, pop that up, lined up the other ends so as we can get them the same. And then where this line of this 45 degree chamfer is, I've drawn a line across on this piece of timber. So now what I'm going to go and do is take this over to the capex and just take 45 degrees off each side until that looks similar to that. To adjust the capex sort of 45 degrees, the first thing to do is to lock this little clamp at the back to allow it to tilt. And all we have to do is just twist this. 
until we get to 45 degrees. Voila, 45 right there. And then we lock that clamp back into place that we had before. That's it. I'm going to use the laser beam on the saw to line this up with the line. Then I'll clamp the end stop in place so all of the rest of the cuts all get cut from the same point. Okay, I'm over at the table saw and I've set the depth of the blade to equal this cut here that we're going to make for the half lap joint. I've got my Incra mitre gauge in the way there to guide it through and uh, here we go. I'm just going to make sure that's lined up with there so I don't cut it too small. I'm going to start just inside of the line. I could tidy that the rest of the way here on the saw, but you know, this was not exactly good for the old lungs. And uh, we're obviously getting some that's not been sucked up by the dust extraction. So I'm going to do this with the chisel the rest of the way. If you don't have a table saw for making your half lap joints, you can use a circular saw or a hand saw. It's just really about cutting the waste out of the way and chiseling away what's left basically. And to prove that point, I'm going to do this batch with the circular saw. I'm going to use my Festool TS55, and for a number of reasons, of course the dust extraction is nice, uh, and it runs very nicely on one of these rails, which I'm going to use for guiding the cuts and making sure they're all nice and straight, or at least the, the two end cuts are nice and straight, the rest don't really matter. But most importantly, what this particular saw has is a very accurate depth adjustment. So I've got this set for 22 millimeters depth of cut. I actually need a total of 23 millimeters depth of cut, but uh, I'm going to just check how deep this really is and then calibrate it accordingly. If I slide that back a bit, you can see we've got a calibrator or an adjustment knob just there. So, all right, here we go. Now remember, treated pine is poisonous, so uh, it's a good idea to have some sort of protection. i up the rail now with the far line, and I'm going to just make a cut there. Then I'm going to keep moving the rail backwards, making a series of cuts, until I get to the last one at this end. Alright, but first I'm going to check the depth that that went to and see if it really is 20 millimetres. He's hoping it is. Pretty close, 20.32. So we need to... Let's take this to 20. Alright, so I've made some adjustments uh, and obviously gone for a slightly deeper cut. So I'll make another cut now in the same channel and we'll measure it again. And I know I won't bore you with all the details, I'll come back to you when we've got a little bit more done. I've made a couple of passes now and uh, adjusted this fellow as I've gone. I'm within 0.05 of a millimetre, close enough for this job. Uh, might tune it up a little bit finer for other things in the future, but really 0.05 of a millimetre accuracy on a saw cut for depth. That's pretty good, I think. All right, so here we go, continuing on. Well, that's actually worked out faster than using the table saw. So uh, yeah, if you have access to a rail and 
circular saw to do this sort of thing, maybe this is the way to go. Certainly a lot quicker. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna hog that out with a chisel and we'll be good to go. Now that we've made our cuts with the table saw, we're gonna go through and clear out all the waste with a chisel. We're gonna use a Western style chisel or a Japanese style chisel. Either will do. Uh, the trick is here is we don't wanna gouge down further into the wood. So we wanna skim along like such or like such. So as we don't dig down further, we just take out the waste here. Okay, so let's get cracking on that. These shorter lengths, 430 millimeters long, will go between the shorter side of the table and they will be held in place with a stretcher to stop, stop the legs from splaying out. So I've marked the center of these boards, 430, so that's 215. As you can see, there we go, 215 to the center. Then I'm gonna use this board as a stretcher so we measure that board, and that's 90 mil. So now I'm gonna use my fancy new little ruler that I bought yesterday, it's an INCRA centering rule. So I'm gonna put that there on zero, excuse my head if it gets in the way. There we go, and I wanna go 45 either, either side of that, half of 90, so 45. there and 45 there either side of the hole and there we go and we'll have the same depth of cut as before, which was 23 millimeters. I find it's usually a lot easier with projects like this to give them a coat of paint before assembly. So you've cut all your pieces to size and everything's looking good. So you give it a bit of a coat of paint now and it gets in all the gaps that once you've assembled it, you can't get into. I'm using an exterior grade acrylic enamel. Uh, this one's made by British Paints. It's called Ultra Protect. It's just some I had lying around the house, to be honest. I probably would have picked a different color otherwise, but this will do the trick. So now we're gonna assemble the top portion of the table. We've got our um, 950 mil pieces here, five of those and we've got three pieces at 435. Uh, together they're gonna to make the top with gaps for the rain to get through or water to get through so water doesn't pool on the top. I've got myself some scraps of wood here, but not just any old scraps, they're all 20 mil in that dimension. So those are going to be our spaces. Uh, good idea to use spaces, it makes life a lot easier. And I'll put in a couple of little bench dogs here and I'm just going to pop a piece of wood against those and that's going to be my edge guide just to make sure everything lines up nicely. So, here goes. This is going to be the underside of the table. Like so. Put in our spaces to make sure we've got a 20mm gap between all of them. Pull those together like that. Pop them down against that piece of wood line them all up. And there we are. Everything's lined up. Nice, easy way of doing it. So now I'm going to take my 435mm pieces. I'm going to put 
one at either end and one in the centre. <coughs> I'll measure the centre exactly in a minute so we get that in the right spot. Um, and then of course I'm going to drill some countersunk holes for the pieces and drive in some square drive screws. I'm going to start with a couple of 25 mil and if they don't go in deep enough I'll switch to a 30 mil. But I don't want to go 30 mil to start with because it's going to be pushing my luck. It might come through the other side there. Alright, so we're just going to do this end and then we'll spin the whole thing around and we'll do the same thing at 180 degrees just to make sure everything is lined up beautifully like that. Now, one of the reasons I'm using square drive screws is, uh, well, one of the reasons I'm using them is because they're square drive, but that's only a small reason. The real reason I'm using these particular screws is they're actually coated, and you want to use a coated screw on something like this. Treated pine will corrode ordinary screws very fast. So, uh, yeah, you get yourself a, something with a bit of zinc on it or a ceramic coating when you're dealing with the old treated pine. And I would recommend using a treated wood outdoors. Okay, so these are 950 long, so half of 950 is 475. Oops. So let's make a mark at 475. There we go. That. And our actual piece of timber is uh, 70 wide, so that's 35 in half of that. So basically we just want to line, and it's not vital, it doesn't have to be exact, but, you know, let's get it close. And I'm just going to grab a square to make sure that is square before we screw that in place because we don't want it all crooked. And indeed it is not square. There we go. Perfect. All right, repeat the process. All right, that was simple. And that's our top assembled. Very easy. Our spaces will pop out like so. And voila. There's our top. All right, we've got our legs. So what we now need to do is to develop a way to join the legs to the tabletop. So we're trying to keep this project nice and simple, simple joints, simple methods, very much a beginner project. You're not going to need a thousand different things, you're not going to need a domino maker or anything like that in this one. But basically just a drill, a saw and uh, a jigsaw and you can build this. So in that spirit what we're doing, we're going to flip this over and then 90mm in from the end because that's the width of our legs, 90mm. We're just going to draw a line, like so, Oops. and what that tells us is 
where we can drill. So we can't drill this side of the line and we obviously don't want to drill past the edge here. We want to keep it in the middle, but there we go. So that's where we can be. Actually, we'll do two there and there sort of thing. And so we'll do that and we'll mark out all the corners and we're going to pre-drill pilot holes. So as later on, it's easy to line up with the legs. Sure, we'll set the drill, speed two, and we want two holes. As long as we're on that line, we can be somewhat random. The reason we're doing it from this side is just a lot easier. We're trying to get the drill through from that side. Now we're going to take our two 240 mil pieces, sorry, oh no, that's right, 240 mil pieces, and affix them to one end of the table. Now what these are going to do are support these main beams when we cut the circle out for the bucket, well, for the bucket that the pegs go in. Going to use the lid as a guide, the lid is a little bit bigger, but uh, oh, and we've got our 20mm spacers that we used before for spacing these guys, so we're just going to space those out from the edge like so. Okay, and line them up. There we go. And so what that's going to do, once we've cut out the hole in the middle, this will support these pieces. Uh, this piece, of course, will be gone. But, uh, yeah, so that's what that's for. So here we go. We're, uh, we're going to put some glue in. Not going to rely on the glue, really. Uh, the screws are what's going to hold it. We're going to put some glue in there anyway. Because we can. <clears throat> Probably should have drilled the holes first. I'll do that on this end. <laughs> now we want the hole set back in the centre because we're going to cut in. Don't be drilling up here because then we'll end up cutting right through the screw. Again, towards the back on the centre Same reason as before. Yes, repeating that you need to use screws that aren't going to corrode because of the treated pine. So these ones I think have a zinc coating. Certainly looks like zinc. Come back zinc! This is an external grade glue. That's important. If you're going to use glue outside, make sure it's external grade. Regular old PVA will just dissolve when it gets wet. The next step of the process is to cut out a hole for our peg bucket to sit in. You might have a different size peg bucket from me, but if you picked up the same 5 litre peg bucket, then what you need here is a 21 centimetre hole in 210 millimetres from the end. So first things we're going to measure out where we're going to uh, centre our hole. So 210 is there and then we need to find the centre of this piece of wood, this being the centre slat of the table. So I'm just going to use my little plastic centre finder there and just run a little pencil line through that and so there we are, voila. 
that's our centre. So we're going to use our little awl here to make a little point, a little dent in the wood from which we can work from. Okay. Now, depending on what you're working with, depends on how you're going to go next. If you're going to be cutting this out freehand with a jigsaw, then the next step for you to do really is to get something like this, which is a woodworking compass, or just a regular compass, and mark out the hole, 21 centimetres. Uh, you can see I've got 10.5 there, half of 21, and away we go, we would just measure like that on each piece of wood. and cut it out with jigsaw. But to make life easy, I'm going to use my Capex jigsaw with my Festool circle cutting attachment. This fella here. So uh, we dial that up for 10.5 being the radius, which I've already done. Lock that in place and clip that onto the jigsaw like so. Now we're going to need a pin for the centre point of this. So that's a 4mm pin. I have a 4mm drill bit here. Flick that over to drill. There we go, and it's going to drill a hole through there. Like that. Okay, so that's our pivot point. Now that doesn't matter about the hole because this is the piece we're removing anyway. There we are. So that'll all sit in like that and I will cut it out. Now you can see I've got the tabletop suspended between two benches so there's nothing underneath that can be cut by the saw blade as I go around. Just a little safety precaution, you don't want to be damaging your workshop. Okay, I've moved the cameras so you can see a little bit easier without my back getting in the way. Here we go, I'm going to cut out the circle. Now something important to keep in mind if you're pivoting around a centre like this, obviously you've got to cut this piece out last. If you cut this piece out first, you lose your, pin, your pivot point. All right, so there's our hole, and, uh, and our peg bucket fits. Excellent. I'm just going to tidy that up with a little bit of sandpaper. You don't need to watch that, that's boring. Now we're going to assemble the lower leg framework, and we're going to do the short sides first, so it's important to make sure that these lap joints are facing outwards because our top rails are going to go on the outside. So we've got facing outwards and up. So then we can take our 430mm pieces, our lower cross members, and we can put those in place. So we're just going to get a square, square them up, and screw them in.
Yeah, we need some galvanized screws. The next thing we need to do is attach our top rails. So we've made our little bottom rail sections, stood them up, now we're going to attach our top rails. Uh, now excuse my back here. And we repeat the process on the other side until that rail is done. Then we'll put down our stretcher. Okay, now we're going to put the stretcher in place and that will be the bottom frame completed. That can happen sometimes, you're trying to drive a screw in, the wood can rise up. A couple of different things you can do, and probably the most obvious is to use a clamp. So let's just clamp that down. And try the screw again. There we go. And that first screw should do the job to make it easy to put in the second screw. Okay, so that's our lower portion or our leg framework complete. Now all we have to do is join that to the top and we've got ourselves a table. Oh, it is heavy. Good. <laughs> yeah, the dog's not going to knock that over. Alright, and so now we're going to screw the top in place. That's just resting on there now. We just rest that down. And we're going to line things up like so. Let's put square. But there's one thing left to do, and that is to drill some holes in the bottom of our bucket to let the water out if it gets any water in it. We're going to keep a lid on the top of it, but maybe the lid will get lost at some point, or something will happen, guaranteed. So we're going to put some little holes, smaller than the pegs obviously. 
in the bottom of the bucket just to let any water out. That should do the trick. And voila, we're finished. Yeah. So here we are with the finished product under the clothesline ready to be used. Please leave a comment down below. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.